Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome on back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Uh, no, I'm not dodging the authorities. I've misplaced my latest prescription glasses. So I've got the sunglasses on so I can see the screen. But hey, it looks funny, so we move. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series here on the channel where I... So welcome back to that. Do consider subscribing and liking the video if you want to show some sweet love and support to your local content creator in what is the deep dark abyss of the YouTube algorithm. We're going to talk about Roma, Roma, Lu, Roma Lu, Lukaku. Is it the end? It's probably the end. But we want to talk about, well, we're going to go through an article by Liam Twomey, uh, some of it at least, and look at some statistics. Also, let's start off with Todd Bailey. Apparently, he's passed the owners and directors tests, according to different multiple reports, which is good because I thought this said test was about to begin and on that i thought it was going to take at least a week i also thought i thought a lot of things boys and girls um that there wouldn't be any hitches because that's what everything was suggesting like yeah bro if the newcastle owners can get in todd bowley will fly through soar through the test like a graceful and beautiful american eagle so yeah but the reports are suggesting that, that he's passed the test and it's good to go he's still in that sort of position of yeah it's just you left mate everything's gonna be okay there is a looming shadow of jim ratcliffe but the suggestions are that he's kind of lurking in case something goes wrong with the uh, todd bowley consortium bid but amidst Relative scaremongering reports about this debt that needs to be repaid, about Chelsea having a deadline, or if they're going to be, you know, also Sky Sports. Sky Sports, man, saying Chelsea are going to go bust, or could go bust. It's just sensationalism, scaremongering, etc., etc., etc. You know, I did a tweet like, Chelsea Twitter in the last 24 hours. Mark Pulisic does cryptic tweets about his son. Chilton Brumman Abramovich demands back the 1.6 billion amount he's you know he uh, loaned to Chelsea. Sky Sports are reporting Chelsea could go out of bus. And Galvadol is linked to Chelsea as a defender. <laughs> so we've really gone through it all, man. Um, but look, by all accounts, things are coming to an end now. We are in the end game now. And uh, yes, yeah, you know, keep it locked. Uh, keep it, keep it up with the, um, what's it called? The notice button pressed on that subscription. And uh, as soon as something happens, we'll react to it here on the channel and we can talk about it together. Um, yeah, cool, man. So this is an article by Liam Twigme about Lukaku. It's called Watching Lukaku, a player in limbo, creatively titled. Um, it was the phase that launched a thousand tweets. Romelu Lukaku sat on the Chelsea substitutes bench at Goodison Park, accompanied by the realization that he would not, in fact, be called upon to find a late equalizer against Everton. Of course, his old club. Thomas Tuchel had decided that Christian Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech were more suitable for that task and the most expensive number nine in the history of football wasn't wild should we like have a sobering moment where we just reflect on what's actually happening that the most expensive striker of all time and chelsea's record signing who only just last season was scoring a lot of goals who also started the season quite well for chelsea and looks like he was going to finish as top goal scorer this is where we're at now lukaku's deadpan stare seemed to encapsulate so much Months of professional misery, an afternoon spent being either booed or ignored by the fans of his former club, whom he has scored more Premier League goals than anyone else. He obviously scored a lot for Everton. The anticipation of more public mockery to come. While explicitly revealing nothing, the camera lingered just long enough to ensure it became a meme. Yeah, it's cold shit really, isn't it? The personal indignities have been relentless recently. 
It was hard not to feel sorry for Lukaku as he jogged onto the Old Trafford pitch as a 70th minute substitute to a chorus of boos from the Man United supporters last week. The travelling Chelsea fans clearly felt so too, responding by singing the name of the striker who had garnered a very different reception at Stamford Bridge eight days earlier. It probably like, you know, oh, go on, don't be mean, let's sing his name for a little bit. Um, I'll talk about my opinion in just a moment. Making his first Premier League start for more than two months uh, against Arsenal that day. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Making the first Premier League start for more than two months uh, against Arsenal that day. That was right. I can speak English. Uh, Lukaku had exhausted their patience. As early as the 10th minute, there were audible groans from the Matthew Harding stand as the Belgium jumped uncontested to connect with a goal kick, only to completely misjudge the flight of the ball uh, to watch it sail over his head on the touchline. Tuchel turned his back to uh, play to remonstrate with his assistants. He doesn't look like a striker he does he's completely he's completely lost bro later on in the first half there were ironic cheers when Lukaku threw himself into two contesting contesting duels and he left the field on the hour mark to booze from the home, home crowd swiftly followed by a pointed roar reading the arrival of uh, his replacement Kai Havertz who, by the way, himself has been in very poor form. I, I love Kai Havertz, man. I, I really do. I think he's such a sensational footballer. But I think also he might be getting away with it a little bit the last, like, four, five, six games. Like, look at his, like, um, performance scores and stuff. It's really actually quite poor. Uh, again, like, I feel like he's going to be excellent, but probably does need... Just to be able to sit out. This is, you know, let's read on. Arsenal had handed Chelsea's. Uh, Arsenal had handled Chelsea's record signing easily. In stark contrast to their previous meetings between the two clubs at the Emirates Stadium in August, when it seemed certain <laughs> that Pablo Mari would be the first in a long line of Premier League centre back that he would torment. <clears throat> yeah, he was incredible that day. Scored early and just dominated the uh, Arsenal back line and then like in his own interview press conference he was like yeah I dominate them which is fine believe your own hype you got to you know? it's like Cristiano Ronaldo's sort of almost attitude Lukaku's unforgiving treatment um, against Arsenal also jars with the fact that Chelsea's match going supporters actually have a long uh, history with sticking with the startling number of strikers who have struggled un well in the Roman Abramovich era from Kesman to Shevchenko Torres and most likely Timo Werner well and you know you could also Liam Toomey has missed out Alvaro Morata here you could also add in Gonzalo Higuain why not chuck in I mean I know the fans didn't get behind him like Falcao and Pato I'm sure you guys could probably add some on the bottom of that as well. The, term, the determining factor in their level of sympathy needs to be the perception of commitment to the cause. Much like, here we go, the aforementioned uh, Alvaro Morata before him, Lukaku primarily as a result of that ill-judged Sky Italia interview in December has been judged to be uh, lacking in that crucial goal. Basically, team over and runs. He keeps trying. Chelsea fans love him. Alvaro Morata threw his hands up, had wobblers all the time. The Chelsea fans didn't like him. Now, Lukaku, he's just... I think when you've got such low confidence... You just, I mean, Timo Werner is tricky because he has low confidence, but he still believes in trying. <laughs> Some people have low confidence and they don't want to try because they're not confident in themselves. That is the current status of Romelu Lukaku. Now, I'm not going to read all this. It's behind a paywall. But I do want to have a look at some stats that I know uh, Liam presents in this um, in this article. So, let's have a look here. If I press this. Here we go. So, Lukaku rarely gets the ball at Chelsea. Uh, pass targets per 90. Uh, passes received per 90. Uh, and then, you know, progressive. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, Chelsea are going to play in a certain way, maybe where the wide players get it a little bit more. But, you know, Timo Werner's getting it a lot more. And this is probably per 90 over the whole season as well. So, like, when he was getting the ball as well. So, you know, the average will be skewed as well. But to get 19.9 passes... 
per 90 minutes is not good and you can imagine that's lower because like i said the average would be cranked up from uh from uh from the uh, earlier parts of the season seven months ago the man was brought on to be chelsea's missing piece uh it's remarkably easy to miss on and off the pitch according to data from fbref.com lukaku has been the target for the fewest number of passes per 90 minutes of any of uh outfield player of tuchel scored when it comes to passes received he is bottom by a considerable amount now like i said that can be tactical like in terms of yeah, we get out wide and, you know, you you occupy the centre-backs and you might get the ball and you just hold them up and and some maybe something like that. But then again, you know, you think of Kareem Benzema. I reckon people are passing the ball. And he's a number nine. Like, he's a number nine. He's not a wide forward. I reckon Benzema gets the ball passed to him a lot. I reckon he is. Uh, of course, it's to be expected that a number nine is less involved in build-up play than his teammates down the pitch, like I said. But Lukaku's per 90 averages in these areas are also significantly down uh, on his two particular seasons at Inter, as well as his two relatively disappointing campaigns at Man United. So this is pretty telling, man. United and uh, United and Inter involved Lukaku more. So here's our season in the blue. Um, and it's very, very bad. Um, it's still not great at Man United, but there's still he's still much more involved. Um, and to be honest, at Inter, it's not like crazy amounts, but it's still like, you know, he'd, he'd play on the transition, and when he gets the pass, he runs up the pitch and invariably scores or assists. So that pass that he receives is like a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, in perhaps the Premier League, it's not quite the same. Chelsea uh, look and find Lukaku less and less. And his uh, attempts to reverse these trends are hardly even helped by Havertz's emergence in recent months uh, as exactly that type of flexible, hard-pressing focal point in the attack. So, yeah, he's basically like the great false nine that moves around and floats about Havertz. And it's just so different to Lukaku. Quote, what he gives us is a huge volume, Chelsea's head coach said of Havertz in March. He covers a lot of meters in high intensity, so he finds the intensity no matter the system uh, the, and all the way the opponent defends against us. He finds intensive runs. He finds distances. This is what makes him uh, and uses makes him use his body more. So basically, this is Tuchel saying, uh, "This is why we like Havertz." Uh, this is interesting. In contrast, the Athletic has been told that Lukaku admitted to Tuchel's staff earlier this season that he was struggling to adapt to the physical demands of Chelsea's relentlessly high pressing, uh, explaining that he had been given more time uh, or more freedom to operate in spurs in spurts by Antonio Conte at, at Inter. The implication was that the additional energy he was expending in the hunt for the ball while having an adverse what it was having an adverse reaction on his ability to be productive with it. The numbers appear to back up that notion uh, that Lukaku has been unable to significantly scale up the pressing at Chelsea compared to his activity uh, while on the ball at uh, United and Inter. Interesting. Lukaku is pressing a bit more. He's pressing pressure success for over 30 percent and he's doing over 10 pressures per game which is only one more than his last season at inter like come on bro it's only one more um and uh, his second season at united he's doing quite a lot of pressing so there is pressing there i mean their second season at united would have been um Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, i think which is a bit more running around than Mourinho. look man it just doesn't fit, does it? Like, it's really... In I feel... I do feel a little bit bad for him. Not massively, because how bad can you feel for Romelu Lukaku after that interview with Sky Italia? But I do feel a little bit bad, because at this point, he's not kicking up. He's not being a dick about it. He's just sitting on the bench. He's shaking hands after the game. Even when he's not coming on, you know, he's going to talk to Frank Lampard. He's not being, you know, a, a problem in the dressing room. He's training. He's even talking to the gaffer like, look, man, I'm trying, but this is, I think this is not working because this is what we did at my old club and it was working then. So in that sense, I kind of feel bad for him. But then again, like I said, you play for, well, you don't play for Chelsea. You theoretically play for Chelsea. You're on like 320k a week and you've done like an idiotic interview, but we all make mistakes. Legit. Like we, we, I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. And that was a mistake 
for him, probably one that he didn't know there was as big ramifications, and he just doesn't fit. And ultimately, this is going to cost him a year of his prime if he gets sold in the summer. It was going to cost Chelsea a lot of financial stuff. What do you call it? Money. <laughs> and also, you know, a year where we could have possibly challenged if things were different. But then again, obviously, injuries to the wing backs are massive in that as well. Um, what do you guys think, though? I think it was really interesting that he had that conversation with uh, with the coaches. And, um, yeah, let's see what happens. Comment down below. Um, new things coming on the channel, so keep it locked, friends. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Peace. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.